Alright, hello and welcome back to Pixelmon, the t what's new in 2.3 update. I'm Loki, or, I'm not Loki, I'm Ghost Wolf, that's Loki. <laughs> oh, identity crisis here. Um, so in this episode, we're going to show all of the new features of the mod. There's a lot of new stuff, new commands, new config options, and a lot of new spawns. So, one of the first things is, Loki and I are going to also showcase the new battles. So, in one of the earlier episodes, a Machoke came through and slaughtered our Pokemon. So, we're going to need to heal up. <laughs> um, so, all both of our teams are fainted. Ah! But, unfortunately, we don't have a healer anymore. Thanks. <laughs> but, it also gives a chance to showcase our newest command, as well as a new feature of the healer. So the healer now will actually drop. I think there was a healer sitting here. Yep. And so it won't get broken anymore, so now it's a little bit of a portable source of healing. Very helpful. Yep. Um, so there's actually a new command, slash pokey heal. So you type slash pokey heal, it will rejuvenate your Pokemon back to full health, full PP. And this is really going to be handy for people in gym battles or people making adventure maps, because all you have to do is have someone walk over a pressure plate attached to a command block that has slash p pokey heal at P, or something like that, or if you're doing a tournament, slash pokey heal at A, and everybody's Pokemon team will be healed up. Now, some things that, I, since I actually was the one who wrote this command, there's some extra little features in it. You can't actually abuse this, if Loki was engaged in a battle, I wouldn't be able to use slash pokey heal and actually heal his team. So people can't grief on a server, oh look, I'm almost dead, I suddenly have a full team again. Uh, also, you can use slash pokey heal, and then Kronos, and your team should be perfectly healed. You should be able to throw your Charmander out now. Charmander. There we go. Alright, so our next command that we're going to show off is the poke slash pokey battle commands. This is perfect for servers, and this will also help us show off the new battle features. So, oftentimes you'll have a gym that's too large that you won't be able to actually throw your pokeball over. Like, I can't hit his Charmander from here. So, I'm, wow, okay, I got a really good shot off on that one. <laughs> but you, you're going to disconnect. So, we fixed a lot of the battle bugs, so like if Loki disconnects in the middle of battle, it's not going to crash my game. See, my EV returns to me, everything is normal. Which just makes it really easy for recording that, because I didn't think I actually hit the Charmander from over here. So this will help for any time someone crashes out or has issues with a battle, it's no longer a destroying thing. Alright, so, let's say I wanted to do that without throwing out my EV. So, using the slash pokey battle command, and I typed, I had that on the... Um, quick bar, so I didn't show you how typing it out. Um, I type slash pokey battle, and then the name of both combatants. You can use the tab autocomplete on that, and it automatically set up our battle. So I'm going to go switch over to my sand true to show you. So here is my sand true sitting right behind me. So you've noticed the battle cam no longer when I'm actually selecting some of the attack abilities. It, it will actually give you a much nicer view of the actual battle. Still has occasional issues with giving you, like, you know, more of a view of a tree if it's hiding under it, but it works pretty well. And now if you want to switch over to your stronger one and show me what a real fight's about. So one of the major bugs that we had, not your Charmander, your Mewtwo, there we go. So one of the major bugs we used to have was that if you died, your Pokemon would die, the camera that was attached to them would spaz out, and you'd be stuck with an earthquake cam. So if Mewtwo would do some kind of damaging attack on me and kill me. Uh, I gotta figure out what he's got. <laughs> there we go. Future Sight. So that killed my Sand True, and you'll notice it's now focused back on me rather than shaking absolutely violently. So that's one of the nice things. And you'll also notice when I send out my Eevee, my Eevee is now located near me. Okay, great. This, this is a great example in this video. The battle camera for my Eevee spawned inside of the cliff, or the inside of the stone under the PC behind me. <laughs> so you will get shaking whenever this camera spawns somewhere invalid, and there's nothing you can really do about that. But it no longer happens when it is shaking violently upon death. I went through and wrote that code myself, so it should not be doing this. 
So that is the new system for the battles and the battle camera. So there's still some shaking issues, but the Minecraft camera just is not something you have that much control over. And so if you have it stuck inside of a stone area or something like that, it's going to still shake. But you won't have the unloaded chunk cam. You'll notice how my sand shrew was spawned right to where my location was. So what was happening before, when you had that view of the unloaded chunk, it was still remembering its old position in the other chunk. So now in your battle, it's all set to your position, so that doesn't happen anymore. So that's where the new battle camera is. So some other new features. We now have some better spawning commands. So slash pokey spawn, and this will actually show off the new boss system as well. Uh, pick something to make a boss. Um, Charizard. All right. Not Chansey, Charizard. So you can spawn regular Charizards just fine. And now let's spawn a boss Charizard. So you can see, one, the size is huge. So this is a blue boss Charizard. So he's doing slash pokey spawn, boss one spawns the bosses. And thank you for capturing him before the thing. Actually, that's perfect, because you can send him back out and show off what happens when you try capturing a boss. So he will, all the blue bosses will have a blue tint to them, the yellow bosses will have a yellow tint, the red bosses will have a red tint to them, and when you send them back out, they revert back to their normal color. They still are very, very large. This, I think, I believe, is the huge or enormous size. But you no longer have the boss coloration. So you get the boss names that have the levels back, and all those bugs are gone. Even if your thing is sent to the PC, which used to get around the code that removed boss... Um, characteristics from your Pokemon, that's fixed as well. Um, so if then if you wanted a other boss, let's do a Charizard with the level 2. So this is a red boss. So it now has a red name and red tint to it, and boss 3 will give it the yellow name and the yellow tint to it. So now it's useful for spawning bosses if you have adventure maps or something where you actually want to show off and have different bosses or something as a, you know, walk into the room and suddenly it'll spawn. Um, if my Pokemon weren't fainted, these would probably automatically aggro on me as well. He is a level 100. This could be fun. Yeah, um, so the old rules still apply. Yellow bosses are 20 levels higher than your strongest, so he has a level 80 Mewtwo, so it's a level 100 Charizard for him. Red bosses are 10 levels above you, and blue bosses are 5 levels above your highest. So as soon as he's finished dying to the boss Charizard, because even a Mewtwo can't beat a level 100 Charizard, possibly, we'll show off some of the other new features. <laughs> Alright, so if you want to get into fly mode, I think you're in game mode one right now. We'll go off and we'll explore the world and show you some of the new structures that spawn around the Pokemon world. So I know of one that spawns close to where we're recording right now. So we now have randomly generated Poke Centers that will spawn around in the world. So you no longer have to worry about how having a bed to start out. You can just seek out one of these Poke Centers. And there's, I think, five different models? And so they are found in the woods, in like forests, they are found in jungle, they are found in the ice biomes, and they are also found, I think occasionally in desert as well. So, there we go. So these are fully functioning ones, it sometimes takes a second for the lighting to update. But so you have a perfect thing for multiplayer servers or single player, you've got plenty of healing machines, you've got computers to swap out your teams, and you've got trade machines. So the po different Pokemon centers all have different looks, um, and you'll encounter different ones as you go. I want to go find a jungle one and then cut back in on the recording to show you how awesome the jungle one looks, because it's my absolute favorite one. All right, so we'll be back in just a second with one of those. All right, and we are back. So here is another one of the Poke Centers. So this one is spawning in the plains, so it's a little bit different design. So we've got our trade machine, we've got our various banks of healers, and we also have our PC. So this was a design contest on the Pixelmon forums, and so they had a bunch of different designs submitted 
And so we picked some of the best ones that had biome-specific ones, and so that's what you're seeing. All right, so we'll be back when we find a jungle one and a one in the, uh, I think the jungle one's the other one. There's a, two or three kinds of ones that are in the forest. So we'll be back in just a second. All right, hello and welcome back. So we've got a jungle Poke Center right here. This is one of my favorite new Poke Center designs. You got your regular one. It looks like it's built into a jungle temple. And so we've got some things suffocating inside the uh, blocks over here. But so downstairs you've got your trade machines. I love the motif on this. And upstairs you have your healers and your computers. So that's it for the new structures. There's a couple other models of Poke Center, and I'll leave those to you to explore and find as you uh, do your travels. All right, hello everybody, and we're back with our very last of the new features for this mod, or for this update. So this one is going, these features are going to deal with your config file options. So if you go into your Minecraft folder, there's a folder called config, and inside there's a pixelmon.cfg file. You can open this in any text editor, and if you go down to the general options is where you'll find all of the options that are going to be added. So the first new option that's added is the ability to turn off rare candy spawn or rare candy crafting on your server. Completely disables the recipe, and so no one who can craft the very easy to make rare candies and spam their team to level 100 in a very cheap way. Um, its default is you have rare candy crafting on, so for those of you who don't care about that, it's not going to change anything for you. The second config option is the ability to disable Pokeball spawning or Pokeball throwing from your hotbar. So essentially the way it'll be is instead of being able to, let me get a Pokeball real quick, I can take a Pokeball, throw it off my hotbar, and catch something, and I don't actually have to have a team strong enough to be able to fight it. So I can just sit there with a thousand Pokeballs, throw them at a Mewtwo, and I'll eventually catch it, even if I have level 5 team. So there's an option to disable that in case on your server you want a more true to the original games feel. The third setting is in the config setting. It's the rent and set the render distance for the nameplates. And so this is a big feature. So when you're out boss hunting or hunting for specific levels of a specific Pokemon, it makes this a lot nicer. So I thought the, and a lot of you also thought that the render distance for the nameplates was really, really short. So like if I walk over to this Numel here, I have to get pretty close to him before I can see his level and his nameplate. Makes it really, really hard when you have to check every single one of them when you're trying to find a specific setup. And so you have an option with three levels. One, which is this current setting, is the normal uh, behavior. Two lets you see them from a bit farther away, and three lets you see them from a ridiculous length away. Um, so this, I actually wrote this code um, to fix this problem, and honestly, I prefer the two setting just because it feels really natural. So Loki has spawned a couple bosses, and so I've got the one setting right now, and all the Pokemon are frozen in place. So I'm going to place these this piece of wood the distance away when I can start seeing his nameplates. Uh, where are your actual bosses? Stand right next to one of them and then I know where to go. All right, so from right here, this this block, I can from the one hall block, I can see it with setting one. And so I can see now it's a blue boss Caterpie. And I could kind of tell that you know, that'd be a boss because of the new coloration, but it helps having the nameplate to be able to confirm. So let me run farther back out here, and then I will be back in a second after changing my config setting to a farther render distance. Be right back. All right, and we are back. So this is with setting two. So I'm standing on the block where I can see it for one, and I'm going to keep backing up until I can no longer see the nameplate. So bosses you can see from a little bit farther away. So you can see a normal Caterpie is right next to that boss. You can see a regular or a boss Caterpie eight blocks farther out than normal. So right here is the farthest I can see the new one with setting two. Yeah, you want to mark that. So the tall blue beam is where the boss is sitting. There's setting one. This is setting two. So this is a fairly comfortable range to be able to see nameplates from. And when you see a normal one, it'll spawn from about this far out. So, I mean, you're looking at a pretty nice little distance. So I'm going to be right back after changing it again to setting three, and I'll show you how it looks with the farthest setting. It looks a little bit bad to me because it looks really far, but if you're out hunting bosses, it's going to be the best view for you because you'll be able to see the nameplate's color 
probably a lot farther than you'll be able to actually read what's on the nameplate. All right, and so I'm back. So there is the regular and the boss Caterpie, and so I've got the setting all the way up to the max of three, and so I'm going to keep backing up until I can no longer see that boss Caterpie's nameplate. So right here. So you can see, setting one, you've got a little bit of distance. Setting two, you've got quite a bit of range. But setting three, you can see names from really, really far away. You can't even read the name. Like, I think it the two mark I can kind of read the name and at the one mark I can actually have a chance of reading the name actually the two mark I can I guess I can read your Caterpie's name it's a little bit small but so those are your settings I personally prefer setting number two because it just feels really natural when you're coming around and having it appear like you can actually see that Caterpie coming into view and then instantly getting a nameplate at setting three that's how kind of far away. So it doesn't look as good to me, but it's there if you want it. I decided to give everybody the option to do it that long. Um, if you try setting it above anything above three, it's going to force it to be setting three. I coded it so you can't have it set to the point where it'll crash a server from spawning so f or rendering so far away. Um, so one, two, and three are your only options on that config thing. All right, and with that, that kind of finishes off the new features. There's a whole bunch of other changes and minor bug fixes and whatnot, and you can look at the patch notes for the mod with that. A um, whole bunch of new moves that have been fixed and added, and all kinds of new stuff um, for people doing uh, some coding work and stuff like that if you want to join the mod making team. There's a lot of new conveniences and stuff being set up. So that's it for us right now. So this has been Ghost Wolf and Loki on Ghost Wolf Games, and feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll be able to keep up with all of our regular Pixelmon series. Uh, we've got a couple of them. I've got one on a server with SPG, another one of the Pixelmon developers, as well as a, an episode or a series I have with Loki. And I also have, am the creator of the Pixelmon Safari Games side mod game mode. Um, and so we're actually going to be having servers of that coming up and matches with other Pixelmon YouTubers, and it's a really exciting new way to play Pixelmon, so we're hopefully going to have that in the next few weeks for you. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Alright, thanks for watching, and see you next time.